Uh, greetings to all participants and thank you for joining us today. We will now begin the International Conference on Advancing Security and Sustainability at the G7 Hiroshima Summit. My name is Masataka Aita from Sogo University Graduate School. I will be your MC today. Firstly, we will have greetings by Professor Masashi Suzuki, President of Soka University. Good morning to all distinguished guests participating here at the Soka University campus on and online. Thank you very much for joining us today. It is an honor to hold this meaningful conference to discuss how to address key issues in preparation for the G7 Hiroshima Summit to be held in May this year. This conference is organized by Soka University in collaboration with the G7 research group established by Professor John Curtin and of the University of Toronto. With the cooperation of our co-sponsors, the International Academy for Multicultural Cooperation and the International NGO and Soka Gakka International, today's event will be organized and facilitated by the four parties. For today's conference, the keynote speech will be delivered by Mr. Takashi Ariyoshi, the Deputy Secretary General of the G7 Hiroshima Summit Secretariat. This conference is also attended by Ambassador Nobuyas Abe, former Under Secretary General of the United, Na United Nations, and distinguished researchers, experts from the University of Tokyo, University of Toronto, University of Sheffield, Technical University of Munich, Institute for Global Environmental St Strategies, Global Security Institute, and the Asia Society Policy Institute, among others. Uh, this is a second joint meeting between our university and the G7 Research Group, following uh, the one held in December 2018 in preparation for the G20 Osaka Summit. The impetus for starting this project was when we welcomed one of the key members of the G7 research group, Professor Luke Hurst, to Soka University. To give you a background of how this project began, since its founding in 1971, Soka University has been committed to fostering capable individuals who will contribute to the peace of humankind. This is based on the university's founding principles set by the founder, Mr. Daisaku Ikeda, that is, be the highest seat of learning for humanistic education, be the cradle of a new culture, and be a fort fortress for the peace of humankind. Moreover, in 2014, our university was selected for the top global university project promoted by MEXT the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. And we have been promoting individuals to foster capable individuals who can take action on the global stage. Based on these founding principles, our university is continuously working to create a global core in the field of peace research and education that is centered on the Soka University Peace Research Institute and the Graduate School of International Peace Studies. I believe that today's meeting is one of the achievements of these efforts. Humanity faces the extremely harsh reality of not being able to solve the problem of war while also facing global challenges such as climate change and pandemics. It remains to be seen whether the G7 Hiroshima summit will succeed in becoming the key to overcoming conflicts among major powers and to promoting cooperation for peace and development of the global community. It is indeed a great honor for us to host this conference to discuss ways to achieve this goal. I would like to express my sincere appreciation for the effort for the efforts of Professor Curtin Professor Koch and all the other related individuals, as well as for the speaker's cooperation. Today's conference is expected to be rather lengthy and intensive, how intensive. However, I am sure it will be equally fulfilling. We prepared some beverages, so we hope that we are able to have productive meeting while taking breaks to refresh yourselves. 
And if you have some time, please enjoy the cherry blossoms in full bloom on campus. My nectar also. And once again, I would like to ex extend my gratitude to all of you and welcome you to Soka University. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll now have greetings by John Curtin, uh, Director G7 uh, Research Group. Hello, bonjour, konnichiwa. I am indeed Professor John Curtin, the director of the G7 Research Group based at the University of Toronto in Canada. And it's also my great pleasure to welcome you here today for this important event our conference on advancing security and sustainability at the Hiroshima Summit. The G7 Research Group is a global network of scholars, students, and professionals. Its mission is to serve as the world's leading independent source of information and analysis on the group of seven major market democracies. To help fulfill this mission, each year uh, we prepare conferences uh, with international and uh, partners in the host country in advance of the annual summit. And uh, this year, uh, we're delighted to do so with uh, our traditional partners, Soka Gakkai International, Soka University, and with our uh, newest partner, uh, the International Academy for Multicultural Cooperation. And we're really uh, honored to have with us uh, from the start today, our keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Takasi uh, Ariyoshi, the Deputy Secretary General of the Hiroshima um, Summit Secretariat. Our pre-summit conferences uh, traditionally address what G7 summits have done, uh, how the host country uh, has contributed, uh, what the hosts uh, plans, preparations, aspirations are for its summit uh, this year, especially on the priorities it has set, and uh, what advice our presenters and participants can give to help achieve these and other goals. This year, for the first time, we are focusing sharply on two critical, indeed existential subjects that deserve center stage. The first is nuclear proliferation and disarmament. The second, climate change and its companions of clean energy and human health. We're also focusing very sharply on producing timely, well-tailored, actionable recommendations for G7 leaders at Hiroshima to adopt and act upon. So thank you to our presenters and chairs, to those here in person, to those uh, in our virtual audience, and to all those working so hard behind the scenes for joining with us to take on this important task. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Uh, we will now have greetings by Audrey Kitagawa, a president, the International Academy for Multicultural Cooperation. Minasama, ohayo gozaimasu. Good morning, everyone. I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the sponsors of this conference and all of their hardworking colleagues and volunteers who have made this conference possible. And I also extend my gratitude to all of our panelists and speakers who have come from near and far and to share their expertise with us and to all of our audience in this auditorium and around the world who are listening in. It is my great privilege to be in Japan and to participate in this important conversation. One cannot come to this beautiful country 
and not be moved by the humility, grace, and deep spirituality of its ancient culture and traditions. I myself have a many generations removed, but my forefathers came from Yamaguchi-ken. So it is wonderful to return home. We are always in remembrance of the many innocent victims of the attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It is very moving to all of us. It is significant that the G7 summit will be held this year in Hiroshima at a time of growing concern over the threat of the deployment of nuclear weapons due to the aggressive rhetoric and actions of Russia in waging its war in Ukraine, the deployment of missiles by North Korea, and the growing provocations that we witness in our local and global communities. As Prime Minister Kishida said, the choice of Hiroshima as a site of the summit is important to convey the reality of the atomic bombings to the world, including the G7 leaders, as a starting point for all efforts towards nuclear disarmament. Japan's G7 presidency has rightly identified the threat of nuclear war and the consequences of climate change as two of the major existential threats to global security and the well being of humankind. And climate change has been accelerating over many years. We are now at a point of crisis with damage to the environment having, in some cases, irreversible effects. Nuclear weapons are stockpiled around the world, posing the threat of sudden and devastating death to millions of people. The devastation to the environment will be as horrific as well as a presence of radioactive pollution and its lingering effects on all forms of life can never be underestimated. May the dialogic process which we will engage in today help us to raise awareness of the grave consequences we are facing and to explore and offer solutions and alternatives that will help to make this world a more secure and peaceful place. May our work together demonstrate that respectful, cooperative, and disciplined engagement is beneficial to our lives and all of life on our planet. In this Anthropocene age, it starts by fearlessly examining our own conduct and seeing how we must change and work together for the benefit of all. I cannot overstate the importance of what we are undertaking here today, and I thank you all for your participation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now have greetings by Hiro Tsugu Terasaki, Director General, uh, Soka Gakkai International. Good morning. It is a great honor to co-sponsor this conference. On behalf of the Soka Gakkai International, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to uh, the distinguished speakers, sponsors, and everyone joining us today, includes including those who are watching the live stream of this event. I'm a great for, for the opportunity to learn from various experts at today's conference as we head toward the G7 Hiroshima Summit in May. The Sokagaka International SGI is an international network with a solid and footing in civil society, promoting educational activities for peace. We can all agree that no nation should seek to construct its well-being and prosperity at the expense of other nations. To this end, the first step is for us as individuals to live with the awareness that we cannot construct our own happiness on the unhappiness and misfortune of others. This sense of individual responsibility becomes the foundation for a more just global order. It is difficult to feel about the world today. As SGA President Ikeda sta stated in his 2022 peace proposal, quote, confused and at a loss as uh, previously 
unimaginable conditions continue to arise, it is only natural that people tend to focus on the negative. But it is crucial that we can, uh, that we find sources of hope in the positive actions being taken to resolve the crisis and that we strive to su support and expand these." End quote. Nothing is more valuable than peace. And in order to create peace in this world, it is important that we never lose sight of hope. We must constantly inspire each other to keep hope alive. Our solidarity as we work towards resolving issues is vital. We must strive to bring forth wisdom based on dialogue that calls forth uh, the best in each of us. The Hiroshima summit is a crucial opportunity, perhaps more so than ever. As an organization headquartered in the host country of Japan, we sincerely hope the leaders of participating countries will engage in committed and responsible discussion on how to address and break through the challenges we face. In particular, I hold high expectations for Japan as chair of the summit to show leadership. It is my sincere wish that today's conference will result in strong and useful policy recommendations for the G7 summit that will have notable impact going forward. Thank you very much.